What's up mobile devs? Today I want to share with you a slightly different tutorial. The goal of this one is to introduce you to an extremely underrated but truly powerful concept. As you have probably already guessed from the title of the video, the goal is to create a custom touchable. If I click here on the default button, you can see that the, this is a very simple touchable opacity from React Native. Instead, if I tap on the custom touchable, you can see this fancy animation. But honestly, this is not the main point of the video. The main point is to provide you with a touchable component that responds immediately to the user. So uh, actually you can see that here we have uh, this uh, lock JS thread button. And if I tap on it, I'm going to lock the JS thread for a few seconds. So let's tap on it and let's try to click on the default button. And you can see that the, the, the default button is not uh, responding immediately. It starts to respond when the JS thread gets uh, released. Instead, if I lock again and I try to tap on the custom touchable, you can see that everything is working nicely no matter what. And that's because the animation is handled fully on the UI thread. So you may be wondering why do we need that, since in a real scenario you will never block the JS thread purposely. But the truth is that in complex app, due to many state updates, many API calls and so on, the JS, threads, the JS thread for some reason will tend to stumble for a few milliseconds. So if you are one of my patrons, you probably already know that. And uh, uh, if you're not, I think this is a great excuse to invite you to support me. So every week I upload source code for a new animation using a reanimated gesture handler and React Native Ski on Patreon. And don't forget that you can always find the written tutorial on reactive.io. So with that said, I think that we can finally move on to the code part. So here you can see that we have the typical Expo boilerplate. And in the package.json, you can see that I've already installed the reanimated package and the gesture handler package. So here we are simply using the latest versions, but we are going to use the shared values and the gesture handler uh, tab gesture. So these concepts are there from a lot of times and probably this tutorial will work also with the older versions. And in the bubble config.js, you can see that uh, we have the, um, I've added the reanimated plugin. So that's quite important. Otherwise, reanimated will not work as expected. So let's move forward and let's get rid of this text. And here we can start to build our square. So let's uh, add here height equal to 150, uh, aspect ratio equal to 1, or width equal to um, let's say 150. Uh, let's uh, add the background color and let's add the border radius. So um, here just for, uh, let's say, let's use my lucky color. So it will simply be our blue with 0 0.5 opacity. That's the color that I use since my first video. And let's wrap this um, a view with a touchable opacity. So let's use touchable opacity from React Native. And let's add here the on press callback. And let's simply log console log pressed. And you can see that everything is working perfectly. So the point is that uh, we are not interested in using this touchable opacity from React Native and we want to build our own custom touchable. So let's do that. And instead of uh, using this uh, touchable opacity, let's add here the custom touchable. And there we go. The last thing that we need to do is simply to create from scratch this uh, touchable. So um, here I think uh, that uh, it is a good idea to create the components folder. And there we can create the custom touchable.tsx. So the custom touchable will simply be uh, a React Native uh, um, function, a React uh, functional component. So React functional component. And let's simply return a view for now. And let's export this custom touchable. And let's import it right there. So, um, of course, we need to deal with all the properties uh, um, that the touchable opacity was handling. So we need to handle the children and we need to handle the on-press callback. 
So let's create there the custom touchable props. And here we are going to deal with the on-press callback. That would be optional. And we need to handle also the children property. So let's say props with children and let's wrap the props. So here let's pass the custom touchable props right there and let's retrieve the children and the on-press callback. And let's wrap right there the children. So you can see that we have our square right there, but of course we still need to handle the on-press callback. So in order to handle the on-press callback, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, we need to wrap this view with a gesture detector. So the idea is that we are going to use the gesture detector and uh, we are going to implement the top gesture by using the gesture detector from React Native Gesture Handler. So let's import it and let's wrap the view with the gesture detector. And here React Native is complaining because we need to wrap the full app with the gesture handler root view component. So you can see that the error is uh, that the gesture detector must be used as a descendant of gesture handler root view. So we can simply do that by dropping the app with the gesture handler root view from gesture handler. So let's uh, apply style flex one just to fill the full screen. And here actually we need to close the parentheses. So we have fixed the first uh, issue. The second issue is that we need to, uh, let's say we need to pass the gesture prop to the gesture detector. And let's do that. Let's start to define the gesture, prop, uh, the gesture property. And we need to use gesture from React Native Gesture Handler dot tap, since we want to handle a tap gesture. And let's pass this gesture to the gesture parameter. And there we go. So currently we need basically to track the active gesture event. So here by tapping, uh, um, let's say by checking the callback that we have, we have a bunch of callbacks that we can handle. And we are interested in the on touch down, on touch up and the on finalize. And these callbacks are going to be extremely helpful in order to track if the gesture is active or not. So uh, first of all, let's also create uh, a shared value called isActive to actually store the, the state of the gesture. At the beginning, the gesture will not be active. And then let's implement the onTouchdown uh, callback. So basically, while we are tapping, the untouchdown will be fired. So let's say untouchdown. And you can see that uh, here I'm pressing and the untouchdown has been fired. So here we want to activate the gesture. So let's say is active equal to true. Here we want to call the untouched up. And this one is going to be extremely helpful to fire the on press. So here is uh, where basically um, we are releasing the gesture and we want to fire the uh, effective callback. And we are going to deactivate again the gesture in the unfinalized callback. So here you can see unfinalized. So here I'm tapping and leaving. And of course, I need to log something to visualize the unfinalized. Let's look also the untouched up. So let's reload. So I tap, I release, and you can see the untouched down, untouched up, and unfinalize, and so on and so forth. But if I tap for a few seconds, you can see that the untouched down is going to be fired correctly, but the untouched up will not be fired, and the unfinalize will be fired twice. And that's because after a few seconds, by default, uh, the gesture will fail. So basically, we can check that by checking that the untouched canceled will be fired. So 
here let's stop for a few seconds and you can see that the untouched town is fired the untouched cancel is fired and so on and in order to fix this uh, behavior we simply need to set the max duration equal to uh, an high value so here it's simply 10 seconds so 10,000 milliseconds and you can see that we tap we release and everything is working correctly so of course if we tap for more than uh, 10 seconds uh, we are going to have the same behavior that we had before so let's get rid of the untouched cancel and let's uh, remove all the logs and at this point we can think about firing the on press uh, the on press callback so here the idea is that if we have the on press callback we can fire uh, the callback itself but there is going to be a problem so let's stop right there and everything is crashing so um, yeah that's uh, let's say that's something uh, uh, predictable and the point is that uh, we are firing the on press callback that is defined on the javascript thread from a method uh, defined by Josh handler that is handled on the ui thread and we cannot do that so we have a couple of options to fix this behavior the first option is that we convert this on press function to a worklet and i don't like this approach so let's uh, just check uh, if uh, this will work. Uh, so uh, basically what will happen is that uh, uh, in this specific case, uh, the onPress function will be defined on the UI thread as well, since uh, it is a worklet and so the, uh, the app will not crash, I hope. And uh, here you can see that by tapping, everything is working nicely. But the approach that, that I like the most for this use case is to remove the worklet. So the onPress function should be a generic JavaScript function. But the idea is to run on the JavaScript thread the onPress function. So let's uh, import uh, run on JS from reanimated. Let's reload. And everything is crashing again. So that's not expected probably because I didn't save. Basically, this was still uh, a worklet, so that wasn't... Uh, of course, we cannot uh, We cannot do that. Uh, we need to have a JavaScript function, and we, can, we need to call the JavaScript function from the UI thread, but uh, of course, uh, the on-press shouldn't be a worklet anymore with this strategy. And by tapping, you can see that uh, everything is working nicely. So that said, uh, we can finally, let's say, create the touchable opacity effect. And in order to create this effect, let's create the reanimated style with the use animated style hook from reanimated. And here, let's return the opacity. And basically, uh, if the animation, if the tap gesture is active, the opacity is going to be settled at 0 0.5. Otherwise, it's going to be equal to 1. And we need to pass the style to the view. Uh, since it is an animated style, we need to convert the view into an animated view. Let's say animated.view. And let's pass here the style, the reanimated style to this animated view. And by tapping, you can see that everything is working nicely. Of course, we can apply a bit timing uh, high order function and let's say duration equal to 100 milliseconds. And here you can see that everything is working perfectly. So the interesting fact is that currently we simply have defined a meter to handle the gestures on the UI thread. So this animation will be totally handled on the UI thread. And if the app is bloated, if there are going to be a lot of uh, gesture, uh, let's say a lot of API calls, in the app if the app is complex this animation will work uh, as expected without be uh, without being glitched but of course there is also an, another interesting aspect and the second interesting aspect is that we can simply play with other type of animations while tapping and what i usually like a lot is to animate the scale so here copilot is simply frightening me 
So basically, we are applying the same concept, but instead of uh, uh, using this active uh, shared value to animate the opacity, we are using it to animate the scale. And you can see that everything is working perfectly. Maybe for this use case, we can get rid of the 100 milliseconds. And you can see how the gesture is working perfectly. We can also use the width spring that maybe it fits better for this use case. And you can see that uh, everything is working nicely, but we can do much more than that. We can, for instance, play with the, the rotation. We can say that we want to rotate with, uh, let's say, map by radiance if it is active. And if it isn't, let's say, zero radiance. So let's reload. So of course, that's too much. Let's say divided by eight. And you can see that we can really do a lot of things. We can also keep the previous uh, opacity animation that we had. And there we go. So it isn't simply having, uh, let's say, uh, a more performant approach, but it is also more beautiful, at least in my opinion, than the other approach. So I really hope that uh, this tutorial was clear. Uh, if you have uh, any additional questions, uh, if you have any suggestions for upcoming comment, uh, content, uh, feel free to suggest them in the section below. And see you to the next one.